Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. I define faith as the name given to the action you take based on your conviction. If you're writing, please write this down. That faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word. It's called faith. Faith goes beyond believing. Believing is part of the equation of faith, but it does not complete faith. Please understand this. I am believing God. Wonderful. But if it stops there, it is not Bible faith. Faith is the name given to the action you take, not just based on desire, based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his word. The name given to that action, the drive that pushes you, the obedient response predicated on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word is Bible faith. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, let's demonstrate something here. Can I have any gentleman, any one of It's not impartation, just people always do. Come, come, my friend, come. Oh, you're already here. How do we do it now? Okay, well, you come stand so that, just stand there. Everyone watch this. Just stand facing me. I don't even know. I just need one person. I don't know what to do with three of them. Okay, that's that's all right. You stand. Don't feel embarrassed. Now, watch this. I'm going to give you a handkerchief. Hold this. Hold this. Lift it up. Then you lift your book up. These are the possibilities that the Bible says we can obtain in Christ. Are we together? Now, um, if the Bible says this is what should be your inheritance, if I ask you, come and receive it. Just say you are coming, but don't come. Ready? Keep confessing that you are coming. Come and have this. This is what many of us are doing. Keep Two years. Five years. Seven years. Yet it's a reality in Christ. And you are speaking, but your faith equation is not complete. Because it's more than, if you did not believe me, you will not even look my direction. So the problem is not your believing. And yet, Mr. Man, while he has been talking for five years, you run and come and pick. This is in two years. Are you seeing now? This gentleman has been believing God for five years. And someone comes from nowhere with childlike faith, knowing what to do. And in one year, obtains that possibility. Time does not change. Time only reveals. Meaning, if your life must change, if things must turn around in your life, it will be based on your truly understanding God's system of faith and sustaining the grace to engage it accordingly.
Are we together now? So this is a possibility. The Bible says it is yours in Christ. But the dynamics of reception, the dynamics of having it and making it manifest in your life here and now is where I think many well-intentioned believers are stranded and left in limbo. So we have our Bibles full of promises. We have our Bibles full of realities that the Bible says should be part of our lives as far as our earth work is concerned. And then we even go a step further to read them and understand them. And yet, sadly speaking for many people at the end of our lives, we are not able to do a very effective inventory of all these things. We cannot truly say that much of these spiritual realities have found expression in our lives. The average believer sadly may go to his grave with hardly anything at all. Most of the things that happen to us that we call and we believe came by faith only happened by the law of time and chance. Because there is a law called the law of time and chance. Even, an, even a dead clock is right twice in a day. If you remove the battery from a clock, it will still be right two times in a day. So there are many results that are not by actively engaging faith. Some of them just happen as a result of the law of time and chance because the Bible says it happens to them all. My intention in this conference is to stand in partnership with the Holy Spirit, your man of God, alongside all the ministers that come to teach here to help bring to our lives the grace to produce intentional results. Not results you cannot explain. No. You know, sometimes we hide behind confusion and just say God be glorified as though God I don't know anything about this we are not very honest if you are the Bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully you can know how a result came about how else will you teach people if you do not know ultimately we give glory to God but you can know how the anointing came to your life you can know how favor came to your life you can know how expansion came to your business it is not it is not a wise spiritual adventure to allow the law of time and chance define your realities your life can be very circumspect and can be very intentional you can get up with an intention that my life will be a reflection of the favor of God. My life will be a reflection of the anointing of the Spirit. My church will be a reflection of the good hand of God. Are we together now? And then engage accordingly the principles that make for that result. In the end, Christ will be glorified. But you will have, you see, the beautiful thing about results is not what you really obtain. It's the knowledge of how to repeat it again. If you lack the ability to replenish, that is one of the greatest faculty as far as sustainability is concerned. Being fruitful can happen by relationships, but replenishing happens through knowledge and mastery. The ability to replenish is the secret for sustaining anything. Replenish, do it again. Prosper again. Build the church again reproduce the result again is God speaking to us every time you do not gain results by mastery you will be afraid of your results because somehow you suspect that if that door closes you will never be able to produce it again so Jesus spent time teaching the disciples they were interested in just having power and he said gentlemen no power is predicated on many things let me teach you he sent them they came back rejoicing and they would almost not listen to the lecture again until they encountered certain casualties they could not deal with and he said sit down we still have a lot to learn but when they were done and the holy ghost came on them from city to city same result region to region same result regardless who was the apostle in charge the results were consistent in the name of jesus i pray that in this conference the realm of ignorance and shadow boxing and trying and hoping may it go far from our lives
in the name of Jesus Christ listen to me that after tonight you can get up and give yourself a time and say by August I should be at this level spiritually financially and it's not pride your confidence is based on the predictability of God's systems do you believe what I'm sharing with you the just shall live by this understanding that the outcome of your life is not just dependent on the love of God is dependent on your knowledge both Lazarus and father Abraham eventually made it to heaven but the condition with which they left is where the problem is herein is my father glorified John 15 and verse 8 when ye bear much fruit you prove that I mentored you when you produce results so shall you be my disciples the Bible says let your light so shine before men he wants men to see it don't just keep silent I'm not talking of some boastful arrogant manifestation but let me tell you something results have a way of compelling the attention of men to respect God and respect his process you will hardly advocate anything sustainably until God garnishes upon your life a dimension of result that dumbfounds the wisdom of men man as a species is arrogant it takes result to humble them to be meek enough to listen It is true it's a weakness in men for as long as your life does not command a threshold level of sustainable results it is going to be difficult to advocate spiritual realities no matter how true it is as a man of God as a business person as a career person there is a dimension of God's investment upon your life that he seeks for the world to see that way they will pay attention come see a man who has told me not a man who wasted my time nobody comes to see a man who wastes their time come see a man one woman when a madman was killed in Gadara that one testimony was equivalent to the salvation of 10 cities let me tell you this we do not have all the time for the global harvest there is a dimension of light and power that must come through the church by the operation of faith that will humble the pride of kings and nobles and nations and bring them to a point where they will acknowledge like Nebuchadnezzar that there is a God in heaven it was the dexterity of the result of Daniel alongside the three hebrew boys look how those guys shook the gods in babylon and brought down kings and their pride the reason why it is difficult for people to see the light and the power and the glory of god upon our lives is that while we advocate very boastfully our results show that we are still at the level of amateurism and infancy conferences like this was designed to step us up into levels of mastery where you can live you can open this door knowing that my life will truly change hallelujah The times that we live in are not times for loyalty over nothing. People will want to taste and see that the Lord is good. The goodness of God can be tasted. The reality of his power can be tasted. One supernatural manifestation of faith, I tell you sincerely, can shake nations and break their pride and cause them to see and to know that Jesus is Lord you must understand the object behind this desire it's not just some pursuit for self aggrandizement it's more than that in as much as we benefit and the quality of our lives improve as we engage faith the ultimate goal is to coordinate this faith force towards kingdom come it's not just about houses and cars and prosperity alone in as much as those things pass through us and we become benefactors of it believe me that this whole teaching ultimately is so that the global harvest nations in one day can come to the fruit of the cross it will not happen by the strategy we are currently working in 
it's too slow there's too much argument about the potency of the faith life that we so propose we need a superior strategy and only faith becomes that victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes limitation in church growth the victory that overcomes circles of witchcraft and circles of demonic oppressions over families the victory that overcomes Kali para kosiata, the victory that overcomes powerlessness do you believe what I'm sharing with you I know that there are ministers of the gospel here respectfully speaking we are in times and seasons where without a superior dimension of the manifestation of faith one day we are going to have empty pews believe me because there is such a display of of the plots of Satan over the church worldwide and Satan is doing everything within his power paying to say Jesus did not rise again and we must introduce Jesus in a dimension that will make nations desire him it cannot just be by stories and lectures alone our lives must prove the reality of the risen Christ are you in agreement with me so we are discussing faith gentlemen thank you the Lord bless you So faith is the victory the Bible says. And then we also establish the fact that faith has to do with action, not mere speaking. I want to now teach a bit on the basis of our conviction because if you have faith in fear, or you have faith in Satan it will not produce faith must be in Jesus Christ and his ability every day we have faith in something fear is having faith in the object that causes you the fear for instance are we together now we need to understand the dynamics of Bible faith Bible faith is based on two qualities of God there are two qualities of God that produce Bible faith in the believer. Number one, very quickly, is his integrity. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 49. Numbers 23 and verse 49. And verse 19, I meant to say. Numbers 23 and verse 19. Please read with me if you can see it. Ready? Read. God is not a man. Please stop there. Please stop there. Stop there and look up. Very, very instructive statement. You may have heard me say it again and again. God only became a man. He is not a man. If God is a man, he must worship who created him. Are we together now? God is not a man. God only became a man. You have to understand this. So God is not a man that he should lie. This is a very interesting information about men. That it is usual for men to lie. For various reasons. Number two. Neither the son of man that she should repent. That means draw back on his word. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good this ladies and gentlemen is the first quality of God that Bible faith is predicated on the integrity of God comes from the word integer sameness consistency unbendedness that God is dependable God is reliable based on a quality called integrity please shout to say integrity that means that before God speaks he will have to find out whether he will change his word tomorrow and if he's sure he will not change it 
then he will say it you can pick this bible and find out the things that god has said concerning you and have absolute confidence that he meant everything he said for instance i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness for instance gentiles will come to your light they are kings to the brightness of your rising for instance i will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten this is the one who has integrity speaking for instance that the the where you have been deserted so that no man will pass through you that you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations i believe why because the one who spoke is not just god who is mighty he has integrity he has integrity The scripture we read earlier on he said and the lord visited sarah genesis 21 please give it to us again genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did unto sarah as he had spoken this is called integrity verse 2 he says and sarah conceived and bare abraham a son in his old age at the set time which God had spoken integrity I will give you 10 naira by 6 o'clock and 6 o'clock there is an alert there integrity the quality of sameness the quality of unbendedness the quality of consistency men change they don't have to be evil it's, 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 it's a reality that is enshrined in men so the Bible says hey don't get used to men and think God is one of them. God is not a man. Someone prophesy to your spirit man. Say God is not a man. That means that every word that has come from your man of God and his wife upon this altar as touching what God has said, you will reserve a right to still keep it and say, Lord, I still believe that this word will come to pass you told me this year will be a year of victory you told me this year will be a year of triumph you told me when men say there is a casting down for me it shall be that there is a lifting up you told me that i will not beg for bread i will see your faithfulness you are a god of integrity your boss may not be that way your relatives may not be that way but i have good news for you god is not a man man of god he told you that by the end of the year you will have your own church land Please find a way of shaking away on I trust a man if you think he plays you or he does not like God is not respectfully speaking he's not some politician who gives you some manifesto today and then changes no he is so obsessed with you knowing his integrity that he archived his track record in a book and says study go through dispensations i spoke to kings i spoke to nations i spoke to men in the presence of their enemies i spoke to men in the presence of their obstacles you're not a man no you're not a man no. you're the god who opens doors no man can shut you're not a man, no, you're not a man, no. you're the God of everything, no one like you. Listen to me, let me bring a word of comfort to someone. I don't care what is before you now. If my father has told you something, 
it always does not look like it until it becomes it no one like you jesus no one like you no one like you they say no one like you no one like you father no one like you my son you're the god of everything i think it was the last time that i was here when um the man of god took me around this massive facility and began to tell me the stories of the wonder working power of god you are not sitting inside a building you are sitting on a reality that was birthed through faith as i traveled from lagos coming down i looked at all the buildings i looked at all the structures and i said my god once upon a time these places were not there somebody was in his room with god and god said i would do something and they said lord i don't know what you are saying but i believe you you in the west here you have an uncommon privilege because you have a rich heritage of men and women who showed you what faith can do ordinary men some many uneducated but god spoke to them and they said if i perish i perish they stood by his word and today they have built things by the spirit that is all inspiring they have commanded results that men cannot produce let me challenge someone here god is not a man if you cannot believe god for one million that means you will never have a house in your life if you cannot believe god for a house it means you will never build anything serious for the kingdom at any level whether you need 50 naira or 1 billion it's still faith that will bring it please listen to what i'm telling you it is faith that will bring that anointing and that unction to your life if god tells you you will stand and speak to nations don't worry about who else is hearing it's you he's talking to focus on him i believe god I've lost the ability to disbelieve him. I will die believing God. My life is a testimony that when you take God seriously and you believe him, he will surprise you. First to yourself and then to everyone. Everybody say integrity. When God speaks to us, we must believe. This is one of the reasons why we have to spend time meditating. Let me tell you this. Please look up. Am I wasting your time? You see... One of the reasons why we study scripture is not just for theological enlightenment alone. We study scripture because we're immersing ourselves into a belief system. Are we together now? The scripture has its way of thinking. And when you soak yourself reading through stories, through parables, something begins to happen to the way you view life. You are immersing yourself into um stories principles that make you think like god philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says let this mind be in you you are not going to be open to scripture for five ten minutes and truly believe you will have the mind of christ no how many of you have seen children who watch cartoons or read all kinds of things and while they are watching it you think they are sleepy until later on they start repeating what you just had even though their eyes were closing it was entering their minds let the word of christ colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says that let it dwell in you richly and then in all wisdom the word of christ the advocacy to be serious with the word of god is not just to make us feel christians it's not just to erode away the guilt of looking on spiritual is more than that the bible is the most concise manual that helps a man to be immersed into the mind of christ 
here and there there are good christian books that are extracts from the word of god but i tell you this soak yourself in this scripture read and let it do something to your mind listen to it and you will marvel and wonder at the way your 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 ability to view life and to analyze things now begins to look as though you were living in bible times because you have immersed yourself it is difficult to believe god if you only find scriptures that help to solve problems and stop there ask anyone who is in the academia they tell you that one of the ways that they gain mastery and master their field and their art so much is by exposing themselves to all the materials that are around that body of knowledge they are so immersed in it it becomes part of their life are we blessed integrity let's talk about the next quality two qualities of God that our faith is built upon one his integrity number two his ability his ability mighty God his ability Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17 the ability of God Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing too hard for you to do. Look up, please. The Bible is saying here, prophet Jeremiah is saying that this heaven and earth where all our problems and solutions every solution we're looking for we hope to bring it here within this domain that both the heaven and the earth was created by his great power and on the strength of that there is nothing too hard for him to do everybody say ability now listen there are people who have integrity in our world but they do not have ability i promise you that if only I get to this office and I see that things are all right, I will give you a job. The person has integrity, but he may find himself in a situation where he does not have the financial, the political, the sociological wherewithal to manifest his commitment. It takes more than integrity to perform. You must have ability. I want to pay your school fees. I really want to. But I do not have the money. God does not have integrity alone. God has ability. Now, this is good news. If the only thing God had was integrity, we'll, we'll still be in trouble. Because he will be apologizing till today. I'm sorry I promised your grandfather that I was going to lift you. I assure you I am still God. Just give me time. When I'm done with the devil, when the mountains, when creation finally sub submits to me, I assure you that you will not cry. That's as far as integrity can go. But my God has ability. Ability is the ability or might is the ability to make what you say happen. I can desire that the light in this great auditorium be off and promise you that in five minutes it will be off I may be well intentioned that's integrity but do I have the ability it takes the 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 the, the, the physical strength to ward off all the resistances and go to the switch and put it off please hear me it is because God has both integrity and ability that we can stand and speak over people's lives. It is because God has integrity and ability that you can sow a seed and actually believe that the harvest will come. His ability shows in agriculture. There is no year provided rain and the conditions are there. When you plant, his ability is still at work in the earth. After more than thousands of years, the earth still obeys him the God of ability 
So when God says, I will lift you, don't look at his integrity alone. Look at his ability. Before God speaks, he checks whether he has the power to make it happen. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 and 4 we'll find somewhere to pray. Second Peter chapter 1 we'll start from verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through knowledge the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3 says according as his the real giver in this kingdom is his divine power. Not just his intention. He wills it, but it takes power to give. His divine power hath given us all things. How many things? Please help me. How many things? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Let me give you an example of the things that pertain unto life. School fees. House. All of the needs that we have, those are things that pertain to life. The Bible says his divine power can give it. The things that pertain unto godliness, the richness of your fellowship, your spiritual growth, your sense of fulfillment, your work with God, whether it is a matter of life or godliness, his divine power sustains the ability to cover all areas. I want you to read scripture carefully and see how God mysteriously turned people around and turned lives around. Moses, why are you crying unto me? I am not just a God of integrity. Integrity was when I spoke to you at the bush. Now you see ability. Stretch forth your rod on that Red Sea. It does not just end with integrity. I need you to see my ability. And they sang the songs of Miriam. I will sing unto the Lord, she said, for he hath triumphed gloriously. Even the horses together with his rider, only one who has power can turn a horse and the rider into a sea. Let me show you his ability in scripture. How about the rod that bordered with no roots? Let me show you his ability. A man who when three Hebrew boys were cast into fire, the Bible says they saw the fourth man looking like the son of God. And it says these were men who the fire had no power over. I will sing unto the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. I sing unto the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. If you know where Egypt is, you will respect God. There is a reason why Pharaoh respected God. Egypt was a place of wizardry. Do you know there are two people in the Bible who ran away from their assignments? Or at least ask questions. It was difficult for them. One was Moses. When God said, I'm sending you to Pharaoh, he said, you are joking. Don't you, don't try me. I was to be the next Pharaoh. I knew what I was studying before I ran away. I won't go back to that place of wizardry with a rod in my hand. You want me to die? I saw these people manipulate the realms of the spirit. They were the then superpower. You would not come to it. Pharaoh was not just a king. Pharaoh was an embodiment of spirits. So Moses holds a rod and they look at his familiar face as he steps into Egypt and he stands before Ramesses, his half-brother and says, brother, good to see you. It's just that this time around, I'm not an Egyptian. I've met one guy called the God of the Hebrews and I have come with a rod as a token from his presence to you. Thus saith the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. I could imagine Moses clapping his hand and saying, wonders will never end. The wilderness has 40 years of being at the backside of the mountain has done something to this man. After his hard-heartedness, 
Ah! The mighty one shook himself and said, This night there is an angel that will pass over Egypt, and that all the firstborns of the Egyptians. Do you know the covenant that the firstborns of Egyptians had? They had something called the covenant of life. They didn't die anyhow. You go and study history. You will know why God looked for the firstborns. Because the firstborn of an Egyptian was not an ordinary child. Are we together now? They were dedicated to deities and they tied their lives to either trees or animals or other objects. They didn't just die like that. One firstborn, could be a, it would be easier for all other children to die. Than one firstborn to die and God said I want to show you something since all your might is concentrated on your firstborns in one night I will pass oh that is the God you are still asking will rent really come that's the same God you are asking will you really lift my child that's the same God you are asking When the firstborns were dead the Bible says Pharaoh did not just release them to go he didn't even allow their dough rise he gave them gold and he said go when they left he sat down in empty Egypt and said what have I done he said pursue them what a hard man haven't seen this kind of thing you should mind your business and say, Lord, let me just be repenting while these people carry their trouble and go. Give me other slaves that will help me build Egypt. He said, no way, I'm going back. That's to tell you how stubborn Satan is. You need power, oh. Just because he left you yesterday does not mean he will leave you forever. He left Jesus for a moment, your Bible says. The next time he would come back, he didn't come to him directly. He came through Peter. And then through Judas. Say unto God. Psalm 66 verse 3. How terrible art thou in your ways. It says through the greatness of thy power. Shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. Hallelujah. The Bible says one time. The city of Jericho was shut within and without. It said none came in and none came out let me speak to someone i don't know what belongs to you that has been shot and nothing what sort of a place is that listen everything god created gives and receives what kind of a place is short nothing goes out nothing comes in i stand by the god of heaven and i speak over someone in the name that is above all names everything shutting your blessings your lifting your lifting your rising i scatter that wall right now none came in none went out let me tell you this jericho was an altar because they didn't carry anything there they were not really interested in, in possessing the land they crumbled it picked a few things, picked Rahab and left. His power. Ah, Lord God. It takes power to get your property. There are still wicked men on earth. It doesn't just take power to get. It takes power to keep. But I know whom I have believed, the Bible says, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed unto him against that day. Please listen to what I'm saying because we are going to pray here. I'm praying that the spirit of faith will rest on someone. That you will get up and shake away all the things you've been given excuses for. some of you God spoke to you since 2015 and said it's time to start your house project <laughs> you know the way this thing is you have to wisdom is profitable to direct we have to look at it let me tell you this there is no time that will be convenient for anything it's faith that creates the time and makes it convenient please hear what I'm telling you men 
men of faith don't check the weather for anything. Even if the even if the storm and the boat is coming, they don't stop moving. They just verify whether Jesus is still in the boat. If he's there, the journey is still safe. I, I don't, I'm not teaching that we should be careless, but let me tell you, we live in a time with people who are full of fear. It's why people don't rise, they don't prosper, they don't build anything. I will do, I will do for decades, and they do not move. There are people who have been in this city probably. I'm challenging you, respectfully speaking. There are many young people here, you are of age, you are still in your parents' house, you will not move out. Why? You have been careful. You know there's no job to wait. No. One day you trust God for grace. Find one, one room with your recharge card. Move out there and lie down in the mat. And say, Father, this is my Bible. This is you. The signs follow. They don't go before you. If you don't move, you will never see anything. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.